Hello everyone, my name is Christian Pfeiffer from the University of Bremen and together with my colleague Manuel Hohmann, we like to present to you today our recent work on teleparallel axions and cosmology. For the rest of the presentation, I stop my video. A short outline of our talk, I will begin by presenting to you the framework of teleparallel gravity and how it can be used to couple axions and in particular to couple axions to general relativity. Afterwards, Manuel will uh, study and discuss the cosmological uh, dynamics of this theory and how the axions influence the evolution of the universe, give some extension and alternatives and a conclusion. So let us start right away. What is teleparallel gravity? In teleparallel gravity, the geometry of space-time and the gravitational interaction is not encoded in a metric, but in a tetrad and an independent flat and metric compatible connection. The tetrad um, they are basically uh, one forms which form a basis of the cotangent bundle of space-time. More practically, they have 16 field components here expressed in a coordinate basis and possess some inverses which satisfy these identity relations. In this setup, the metric is a derived object which is obtained from the tetrads by a contraction uh, with the Minkowski metric. In this sense, the metric is the square of the tetrads. As additional ingredient, we need a connection and connections are usually uh, class, uh, characterized by their connection coefficients here represented in a coordinate basis. This coordinate basis representation is related to the tetrad basis representation of the connection where this equation where you see the inhomogeneous transformation behavior of connection coefficients and these connection coefficients uh, in the tetrad basis are usually called spin connection coefficients. Now, connections are characterized by their properties of their parallel transport. They may possess curvature, non-metricity, and torsion. The curvature measures the parallel, what happens to the vector when parallel transported around a closed curve, if it deviates from its starting direction or not, and the deviation is exactly measured by the curvature. The non-metricity measures um, how the length of a parallelly transported vector changes, and the torsion measures if we do mutual parallel transport of one vector along another and then change the order if we obtain a nice uh, closed parallelogram or not. The most famous connection you know is the Levi Civita connection, which is employed in general relativity. This connection has curvature, but no non metricity and no torsion. Its connection coefficients are most easily expressed in the uh, coordinate basis where they are defined solely in terms of the metric. In teleparallel gravity, we are looking at a connection which has no curvature, it is flat, which is metric compatible, but possesses torsion. For this connection, it is most easily characterized by the spin connection coefficients, which turn out to be generated by local Lorentz transformations. So these lambdas are Lorentz matrices depending on the space-time point. Having introduced the geometric fields, the tetrad, the Lorentz transformations, and the only potential for the tetrad components, torsion, we can uh, highlight that the Lorentz transformations are gauge transformations in this framework. And what we find is that the affine connection and the metric is invariant under the following transformations, a Lorentz transformation of the tetrad and the corresponding inverse, and a Lorentz transformation of the original Lorentz transformations which generate the spin connection. And that these transformations, we find that the metric, the affine connection coefficients, and the torsion is invariant. In particular, now we can choose a very special Lorentz transformation, namely the inverse of the Lorentz transformation which generated the original spin connection, which results in the fact that the transformed Lorentz transformation is the identity. In this gauge, the affine connection is determined solely by the tetrad, so is the torsion. This gauge is called the Weizenberg gauge, and without loss of generality, we can always work in this Weizenberg gauge. In order to give dynamics to the field, we next want to construct Lagrangians for a theory of gravity. These Lagrangians must be constructed from the torsion, and it's most convenient to decompose the torsion into an axial part, into a vectorial part, and a tensorial part. These names originate from the fact that the um, vectorial part is determined by the trace of the torsion, which has only one index. The axial part is determined by the totally anti-symmetric part of the torsion generated by the Levi Civita symbol, and the torsion, uh, tensor torsion, is what remains. 
From these ingredients, we can uh, construct five independent scalars that are quadratic uh, in the torsion. That is the vector torsion, the norm of the vector torsion, the norm of the axial torsion, the complete contraction of the tensor torsion, and we can construct two parity odd terms, which are the contraction between the vector and the axial torsion, and the totally anti-symmetric contraction between the tensor torsion components. Now we can use these scalars to construct the most general Lagrangian for a gravity theory based on torsion. Uh, this theory contains five coupling parameters for each of the uh, scalars uh, we just constructed. And the odd scalars we couple to a pseudoscalar or axion field in order to make the whole um, action parity even. Moreover, we introduce a kinetic coupling uh, of the axion and a potential. Special theories, which are studied a lot in the literature, are, for example, the teleparallel equivalent of general relativity. For these, the coupling coefficients to the parity even terms take a very special uh, value, while all others are set to zero. The uh, importance or the particular property of this theory is that the field equations are equivalent, 100% equivalent to the Einstein equations. A generalization is to um, do not fix the coefficients in front of the parity even terms, but still do not couple an axion. Um, this is a theory called new general relativity, which is also studied a lot in the literature. What we are mainly interested in is in the possibility to couple uh, axions to general relativity. That means we fix the couplings of the, the coupling constants in front of the parity even terms to their um, GR value but leave the axiom couplings arbitrary. Manuel will discuss this theory in the cosmological setting further. A few words about the field equations of the theory. We can couple matter, where we assume that the matter only couples to the tetrad via minimal coupling to the metric. And then we can derive the field equations of all components um, with help of variation. Variation with respect to the tetrads leads to field equations of this form which can be rewritten with two lower space-time indices here via a contraction with the tetrad and the change uh, of index with the help of the metric. On the right-hand side here, you simply see the energy momentum tensor uh, you're used to from general relativity. What we can do is we can decompose this uh, field equation into symmetric and anti-symmetric part and find that the symmetric part is sourced by the energy momentum tensor and the anti-symmetric part imposes a, constraint, a further vacuum constraint on our 16 field variables. Variation with respect to the spin connection, where we need to have in mind that the spin connection is generated by Lorentz transformation, so effectively we vary with respect to Lorentz transformation, yields to field equations um, which are equivalent to the anti-symmetric field equations. In this sense, all the information about the dynamics of the theory are already encoded into the tetrad field equations. This is another manifestation that these uh, spin connections and these Lorentz transformations of the theory are just gauge degrees of freedom. Last but not least, we can do variation with respect to the axiom field to get a Klein-Gordon-like equation, which determines the dynamics of the axiom field. And this concludes a little summary about how teleparallel gravity works and how it enables us to couple axions to general relativity. Some literature you can find in these references and in our paper. Before Manuel takes over, let me quickly uh, introduce the uh, setup for the analysis of the cosmological dynamics. For that, we need the most general homogeneous and isotropic tetrads in Weizenberg gauge. To do this, we solve uh, generalization of the Killing equation to teleparallel gravity and find uh, two branches. One branch we call a vector branch. This is simply the explicit uh, expression of the tetrad components in local coordinates. And we have another branch, which we call the axial branch. It will become clear in a moment why. Both lead to the friedman lemaitre robertson walker metric when we construct the metric out of it. So they are both tetrads of uh, the friedman lemaitre robertson walker metric where we use the notation that chi is square root one minus u squared r squared, where u is square root of the curvature parameter. And we have two degrees of freedom here, the scale uh, factor and the lapse function, where we usually fix the lapse function by a choice of coordinates. Now, the vector branch, when we study the coordinate, uh, the torsion components of the vector branch, we find uh, that it has only vector torsion. That's why it's called the vector branch. 
um, where the H is the Hubble parameter and the N is the unit normal vector. And the axial branch has torsion components, has a vector torsion components and axial torsion components. And now Manuel Hohmann will take over and explain the uh, cosmological dynamics of these two branches coupled to axion. We now insert the cosmologically symmetric teleparallel geometry into the field equations. For the vector branch, we obtain from the tetrad equations the generalized Friedman equations, where we find the contribution that corresponds to that of a minimally coupled scalar or pseudoscalar field. The same is visible also in the scalar field equation. Hence, we find that the cosmological dynamics in this case behaves the same as in the case of a minimally coupled field. This is different for the axial branch. Here we find an additional contribution from the non-minimal coupling term B. This is also present in the scalar field equation. Note that there is no term from B tilde. Hence, we find that in this case, one of the non-minimal coupling terms contributes to the cosmological dynamics. To study this further, we consider the axions as an effective fluid. Here we consider only the simple case that we couple the axions to the teleparallel equivalent of general relativity, where the constants in the action are given by the given values. In this case, cosmological dynamics is given by the Friedman equations, where we have moved the axion contribution to the right-hand side as an effective density and pressure. The density corresponds to that of a minimally coupled field, while for the pressure we find, in the case of the axial tetrad, an additional contribution. This contribution is linear in U, where U governs the parity of the tetrad. Hence, we find that this is a parity odd pressure contribution. We also study the dynamics in the dynamical systems analysis. Here, we consider only the vacuum case. In this case, we can solve the Friedman constraint by parameterizing the phase space with new coordinates alpha and beta, in terms of which we can express phi dot h and a as follows. In order for the scale factor a to be positive, we must restrict alpha to lie between minus 1 and plus 1 and to have sine u the same as sine of sine beta. Further, we consider only the simple case of a constant potential corresponding to cosmological constant and canonical kinetic term. In this case, we obtain an autonomous dynamical system which has the following form. In the following, we will study the fixed points and phase diagrams of the system. First, we find a fixed point given at alpha equal to plus minus 1. This corresponds to the Big Bang and Big Crunch singularities. Further, we find an infinite expansion or contraction, hence a zeta phase, for alpha equals to sine beta equals to zero. Finally, we find settle points for cosine beta equals to zero, where alpha takes a specific form. Note that the presence and absence of these saddle points depends on the value of B. This can be seen also from the phase diagrams. In the case of minimal coupling B equals to zero, we obtain the phase diagram shown on the right. Here the gray color indicates accelerating expansion or contraction. In the case of a weak axion coupling, we find the appearance of a darker grey area, which, ex which signals superacceleration. Hence, the behavior of a phantom field. Also note that the previously present symmetry between the left and the right-hand side of this diagram is broken. This corresponds to the breaking of the parity invariance in this model. In the case of a critical coupling, we see that the saddle point denoted by a star on the right-hand side of the diagram is now shifted towards the boundary of the phase space. From where it disappears in the case of a strong coupling where b is larger than square root of 8 third.
We can also study extensions and alternatives to the model presented so far. The most simple extension is to replace the single axiom field by a multiplet, where each axiom field now is coupled with its own pair of coupling parameters. Also, the parameter functions v and z depend on all such axioms, and the single kinetic coupling function must be replaced by an indexed quantity. The generalized action then takes the following form. Another possible generalization is to consider dynamical couplings, where now both the axion coupling parameters and also the constants in the teleparallel gravity action become functions of the axion field. For a single axion field, we thus obtain the following action, with a number of uh, functions that depend on the axion field. This may also be generalized to multiple axion fields, in which case the coupling functions depend on all axions. An alternative arises from considering symmetric teleparallel gravity instead of teleparallel gravity. Here the dynamical variables are a metric and an independent connection, where the connection has now vanishing torsion and curvature. The gravitational interaction in this case is mediated by the non-metricity. In this case, one can construct five scalar invariants and one pseudoscalar invariant. A corresponding action with an axion coupling is therefore given by coupling the axion to the only pseudoscalar invariant term. Of course, also in this case, we may consider multiple axions and dynamical couplings. Here we do not show the action, in this case, for brevity. Finally, one may also consider the case that the independent connection has both torsion and non-metricity, but still vanishing curvature, which is known as general teleparallel gravity. It combines the features from both the metric and symmetric teleparallel gravity theories shown before. In addition to the invariants constructed from the torsion and non-metricity alone, one finds three additional scalar invariants and three additional pseudoscalar invariants. Hence, one can couple to all the pseudoscalar invariants present in this theory, which gives six different terms. Also here, do not show the action for brevity. To summarize, teleparallel gravity describes gravity in terms of torsion and of curvature. Dynamical fields are a tetrad and a flat metric compatible spin connection. The latter can always be chosen to vanish by using the so-called Weizenberg gauge due to local Lorentz invariance. Teleparallel axions are introduced by coupling a axion or pseudoscalar field to the pseudoscalar invariants that can be constructed from the torsion tensor. We have studied teleparallel axion cosmology where we have assumed a homogeneous and isotropic teleparallel geometry. Two branches exist, the so-called vector branch, in which the axion appears minimally coupled, and the axial branch, where we obtain a non-minimal coupling. We have seen that the dynamics for the axial branch changes, depending on the coupling. Finally, we also mentioned several alternatives and extensions. By using so-called non-metricity, in addition or instead of the torsion, and by generalizing to either multiple axion fields or dynamical couplings. Thank you for your attention.